Welcome back to uh, uh, Quick Tips, and uh, we'll be doing a demonstration of how to install Mesa for Maya. Now, Mesa is the uh, new tools for doing source export. Um, there's a bunch of you know you can you can read it on the site, um, and I'll put a link in the description of where to download this at. Uh, but essentially, you'll want to download this uh, package, and I believe, yeah. You download the newest one, which is uh, currently 2.01, and we're going to want to want to uh, put this on a directory we'll refer back to um, time and time again. And uh, what I usually do, whoops. What I usually do is I put the Mesa folder, this folder, right here on the C drive directly. Um, it just makes the pass a lot easier. And uh, you would just drag and drop or extract to, and there you go. Let's break it down to what it what it does. And I'm not going to be too overly detailed because I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, but what we're really concerned with is the config and for installation and then when, when you're actually working in Mesa for Maya you'll be in projects and then whatever tool you're using but usually we'll be working on Sourceful Maker. So we need to config this once we you know we've already started um, we need to config this once we've already uh, got everything copied over and do that just go to config fo folder and you're going to want to first edit the mesa underscore config dot bat file. And I'm going to open this in Notepad plus plus. All right. So there's different parts of this, um, and we'll talk about what they are uh, going to line by line. Now the set mesa directory is that folder is the directory we just copied over. So that's why I said, let's put it in C. It's C, C Mesa and C Mesa. That's where the, that's the root of the folder. That's what you would, that's where you would put it at. Um, the next directory is where Steam is installed on your computer. And for me, that would be the C drive um, program files. I've got a 64 bit operating system. Of course it's Windows 8. Uh, so it's x86 and then Steam. And you want to leave the quotation off. Uh, don't put the quotation there. The next bit tells it what is your Steam user. And uh, this is not actually my Steam user, but I left. I I don't want to give my real Steam username. So <laughs> anyway, you would put that there. Um, and then the next section is actually where you set where Maya's at. Now it says it only works in 2014 or 2014 right well that's not exactly the case the it works in 2015 too uh it works as well in 2015 as it does 2014 so if you're running 2015 you're worried about it don't be because that's what i use i use 2015 um i think i closed maya but yeah it it runs just fine so you would do is you would put 2015 hyphen x64 and you wouldn't touch any more, and you would save it. So uh, you've done that. You set up your thing. I need to go back, and you need to um, check ENV. Now, what's important here is that you right-click and run. Actually, what you would do is you would uh, do this. Wait for it to do its thing. And you have to run it as administrator because it's, it's going to be uh, doing some system variables, which are basically just telling Windows where, or yeah, setting a variable for Windows that says, oh, hey, this folder is actually this directory path. Uh, it's nothing, nothing to be afraid of. And then you would do, uh, you know, I'm going to do clean EMV just to give me a fresh start. Again, running as admin.
And it's not very much, it's just uh, a few things. All right, then it closes, and then I'm going to do check in V. Oh, okay, so <laughs> I did it wrong. Um, this, you have to run this first, and then this checks it. I cleaned it, so I basically overwrit what this did. Um, so we'll go ahead and do this again. Sorry about that. And we'll go and uh, go ahead and show you what what, it, what it's what it's actually doing, because um, you may be wondering what exactly is going on. So we're in just control panel system, advanced system settings, uh, advanced environmental variables, and it's adding to your user variables these variables for these paths. So essentially, uh, when the program is calling these variables, Windows knows where it's at and, and handles it appropriately. Basically, that's all it's doing. That's what a lot of programs do anyway, uh, that link to certain parts of whatever. So you could check it again, but I've already done it. And then you would run the, the uh, tools installed. Now, I've already done that. What you'll also want to do is... Um, Maybe open another window up. And we're going to go to our documents folder because this is where Steam, uh, sorry, uh, Maya stores its uh, preferences. So you go to documents or wherever you have it saved at. Or by default, it's on it's in documents. And you, you would do 2015 x64. Now, in the past when I did this, it was actually looking for this without the hyphen. So just to uh, spare myself problems, uh, I just go ahead and do both. So I believe it's pref. Oh yeah, I think it's pref shelves. Shelf, 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 shelf. Yeah, Mesa. So you would go in here and Maya pref shelves. Uh, this would go over here. Now it should have copied all the scripts over, I think. So it's just, it's just. This is a extra step that I do just in case, because sometimes I, I had like um, the icons not showing. The buttons were there. The mail scripting was there, but the the actual buttons were not. So at this point, you should have it installed, and it as we'll show you in a second comes with a shelf from which you'll do all your operations and we're going to just cover basically what each of these does and then we're going to close the video off and in another video I'll be doing a tip on how to actually or what the you know how to do a basic export from Maya um, but let's go ahead and talk about it so some of these services don't work without certain dependencies. So obviously, sometimes these don't work. This, we'll, we'll start from the left. Um, so this opens the open sources, opens your uh, pro okay. I forgot to mention something. You have to, you have to set this up. You have to set your project in Maya to that project folder. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. So let's set a project. And basically, a project is where your all your files related to a project, basically, are stored in Maya. And it, it kind of keeps things organized. So you want to go to File, Set Project. And I've already got that set up. So I'm setting my project as a source filmmaker. And then we'll set that. So it's basically 
than that. I don't know why that's broken. That's you'll find that some of these are kind of broken. Yeah, it's just opening documents. So I don't, I don't, I never use those two. Um, so this is S and D options. This is where you'll be working out of for the plugin mostly. Um, it's kind of self-explanatory. You have all these options for exporting models. You can do a reference in a physics model, you know, say for a Gary mod compliant um, thing. You can set body groups and export the body groups that way as well. Uh, models that can break, you know, basically if there's physics or something like built time physics or whatever, and then level of detail models where you can have uh, multiple different versions and the versions of a model of on poly, poly counts. So if it, your computer's crap, you've got one model that works. If your computer's great, you have another model basically. Uh, this is going to be a default option. Mostly is static idle for static props. And if you have an, if you've animated something, it'll actually, um, you actually use export animations. So you can actually export animations out of this. Now there are other options like free transformations, which you may want to use, but you could probably just do it better in the main interfa interface by itself. Uh, this is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, this will make a, a thumbnail for Half-Life Model Viewer. This is the option for exporting uh, the VTF and VMT files. Sometimes this works, sometimes it's kind of wonky. I prefer not to use this because it kind of hangs there everything else uh, and I can create VMTs and VTFs uh, faster anyway than doing that and then create QC script is basically that it creates a very basic QC script based off the stuff that's in your model uh, sometimes it's more con conclusive than others I kind of use it to build the build the, I use it to build the basic QC script and I go and edit it later on anyway and then there's finally the option to compile a model now what I typically do is I typically don't render in, and I don't typically ex export fully in Maya because sometimes it crashes and it's always been this way with this plugin. It kind of crashes sometimes. So most of the time I'll just turn, you know, turn off model and then I still have to run a full compile to get the correct, um, S and B models because even export only doesn't work. It, it like tries a little bit and it farts out. So I dropped that. So, uh, so I would do a full compile and export the models that the SMD files out that way anyway. Uh, and then another important point here is your paths. Now you'll have to do this every time, but you would, you know, you can't generate a path until you save, you save something. So we'll do that right now. Just to show you. And uh, it'll, it'll default your model stuff in your scenes to model source. SRC. So as you can see, that this, that's where all my stuff's working out of anyway. And yep. Like this and the options paths. I'm only going to show you this because it's important um, because this is where everything works out of. It, it defines the paths based off where your save file is stored. That's why it's important to have your project set up right. Uh, you don't want to deal with that. I haven't played with these before. I'm sure you could play with it if you wanted to. I don't. Uh, as far as all this other stuff goes, I don't use it. So we're done with that. Now full compile will do the actual compile, the, the full export of everything and, or however you had it set up in your SMD options. Uh, it'll do the whole shebang if you wanted it to, uh, QC compile sometimes works. Um, it, for me, I never use this. It never really works. Um, I use, uh, X, I use a third party tool anyway like uh, crowbar uh, this I don't know what it does but I guess it kind of does stuff uh, export morphs is what you'll use for your VTAs your flexes whatever uh, I found that out recently actually uh, this is the import SMD model this is what you would use say if you're going to bring in the reference model for a pony so you could do bone mergeable props it takes a while, but it's kind of necessary the first time, and you would basically save that as a its own scene file, and you just use that scene file, a copy of that scene file every time you make a model. So it's up to you how you do it. But that it took me like 30 minutes on my machine to do it. Uh, this will do an SMB sequence file for sequence animations. Layer editor is kind of important. It actually creates the layers you'll need uh, by default. Physics and reference, you can actually if you're not doing physics models, you can turn and get rid of that. 
Uh, VMT attributes will add VMT attributes to the, the model. I don't know if it's important or not. I do it anyway. Yeah, it. Uh, some of these other tools don't work. I This will open up in Notepad. There's not a QC file, though, right now. I haven't made one. Uh, VTF edit a diffuse that's supposed to work. Normal as well. I haven't used these because they're not always working. At least I haven't figured out how to work it. Uh, hammer. If I, I don't think I have Hammer installed. But uh, with, like, say... Half-Life Model Viewer, if my model was here, if I if I compile my model, I can just click that one button. It'll automatically open this model that I made, which is nothing right now, but that's what it would do. And this is the launch QCIs, but I don't, like I said, I don't use a lot, a lot of that stuff. It's not necessary. Um, but yeah, that's mostly what the tools are. Uh, tools are you get them in and they uh, kind of work. And they work enough, good enough for me. So thanks for joining me. And uh, see you next time.